the Vibe Check Tuesday, and we're taking your calls at 301-230-0980 with your thoughts on Jaden Daniels being named the starting quarterback of your Washington Commanders. Let's go to Dontel. Dontel, thanks for holding through the break. Uh, You're on the Hoffman Show. Hey, Hoff, thanks for taking my call, buddy. It's been a long time. You got it. Now, now, if we could date back, I don't know if you remember or not, when I said that if I, if we didn't draft Daniels number two, that I was going to throw all my commander stuff away and uh, get my Ravens gear out. So I don't have to do that now because we got them. But, Wait, hold on. Did you already so have the Ravens? Number- Did you already have the Ravens gear, or were you going to have to go buy some Ravens gear? Oh. Oh, no, I got some Ravens gear. I'm from Maryland. I got a little bit of Ravens gear. I just never wear it. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I think some people will probably have some. We could do a whole hour of radio on that, Dontel, but we'll just let you slide on it and keep rolling. What, what else What you got on Daniels right, now? Well, well, it's not actually Daniels, man. I, I, You know, I was hoping that they did things to make him succeed in year one because I keep hearing about this uh, being a bust or, you know, having the potential to be a bust or not. But to make him successful, he had, they had an opportunity. We, we need a T. Higgins, we need a Brandon IU type of player. And we had a chance to get both of them if we just give up something. We can't just keep everything we have and not make this kid, you know, give him something to work with. Because our receiving core, we, we're not updating that any. And Terry McLaurin can't be your number one guy. He just can't be. That's just the way I feel about it. What do you think about that? I think that – um I trust Adam Peters' feelings slightly more than yours, Dontel. I mean, you got Ravens gear in your closet. Wait, what are we doing? What are we doing here? Uh, no, in, in all, you know, in all seriousness, though, I, I think I, I understand your point. Here would be my counter, and I think I think this is actually where I side, not just playing devil's advocate. You can't build an entire football team from scratch, which is essentially what they were starting from in one off season. And part of being smart and judicious as a general manager in the NFL is managing your assets well. And part of the problem for Adam Peters, because the last staff was very bad at picking players, yes, but they were worse at coaching them, is he has to figure out what value do his assets actually have? Is Jahan Dotson good at football? Is Terry McLaurin a number one wide receiver? Is Jamin Davis good at linebacker or defensive end? Can they make him good at defensive end? Is Emmanuel Forbes an NFL player? Like, these were all questions with their last, you know, what, four uh, or three first-round picks, plus a guy like Terry to figure that out to stick with the wide receiver position. And because they didn't know that, they don't know the value of their own assets, they don't actually know what they need yet. And they certainly didn't during the offseason. They hadn't had any practices yet. And I think it is worth the the down whatever downside comes with not having as good of players this year it is worth that downside to find out what you have and thus you can more accurately fill what you need moving forward because needing a number one or determining that terry actually is a true legitimate one changes your calculation next year figuring out if jahan is useful useless a, an actual hidden gem of a star like they didn't know that coming in and that changes what you're going to do so could they have just done a more sure thing potentially and and taken some long-term flexibility out by giving t higgins or brandon Ayuk a ton of money and trading draft capital yes but you might have the chance to acquire either one of those guys next year and have a much better idea of whether or not they actually fit what you're building and what you actually have in house and what you're replacing or or adding to. I think that's worth it. What do you think about that? I, I agree with you 100% on what you just said about all that. And if they're going to go that route, what I was hoping was, then they start Mariota then just to see, to see what we have. Because I don't want Daniels going out there with nothing. But and I don't think he's going out there with nothing. In, so- like, that's the thing. He's not going out there with nothing. Like Terry is, I, I like, it, I like Terry. I, he's really good. I like Terry. Zach Ertz is uh, yes, is yes, still is. effective, really and the thing is, like Jaden is way better than Marcus. So he Jaden's good enough right now 
to gain experience, even if it's not going to lead you to a Super Bowl. But the experience he gains now can help you to a Super Bowl in the future. It's not like the dude's going to go out there and, and um, David Carr it, where he's surrounded by so little and he's not ready that he winds up be- getting ruined by bad habits. Like, Jaden's good enough now that he is his own safety flotation device. I think sitting him is, if you thought that it, when they drafted him, I totally get it. Seeing how this has played out, I think that's being way too wedded to an opinion you had in, in April. I, 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 I do love Terry, though, but I, I don't like Docs, and I don't. And so I just think Terry's the only one that we have. And then we lost our uh, tight end. We lost Thomas and whoever else. I don't even know who our tight end is to this point now. Uh, Zach Ertz, who might be going to the Hall of Fame? Oh, Zach Ertz. Oh, he's starting, huh? Yeah. I thought we'd have somebody a little bit younger than that coming well, in with us. Well, I mean, Ben Sinnott got drafted, and he looks like he could be pretty good immediately. So, yeah. Okay. They, yeah. Um, you have paid attention, Dante, since since April, right? You didn't just go on a bender after yeah. they drafted Daniels, because there's a lot of stuff well, here did, that were uh, <laughs> okay. I'm just. But I was hoping I was hoping they went and got Higgins, man. I, I really love T. Higgins. We just hadn't had anything like that for a while, but I all right, you sh- Dante, we got we got to run. I think you should draft T. Higgins in fantasy. Uh, thanks, thanks for calling. Um, all right, that's. That's Dante, uh, everybody. Anthony, how many people in your life do you know that have Ravens and Commanders gear? Uh, I don't think I know one. We know Dante. Oh, well, yeah, Dante. We know Dante now. <laughs> I guess he has the best of both worlds. I he, mean, he's, he, he's ready. He's yeah. ready to jump shit. Look, if you're a child <laughs> and you've grown up in this area in the last 20 years and you have a ch- and you could be like, I can, my dad seems miserable every Sunday and my friends who wear purple, they seem happy. Dad, I'm going to wear purple. I get it. I get it. Um, to be a grown adult and have both teams, like even if you kind of root for both teams because you live in Maryland, I get it. To go as far as to investing financially yeah. uh, in in both you gotta pick one. gear, that's that's a wacky bit. Yeah. Then you but just hey. got to pick one. Sports Radio, baby. You're home for wacky bits. Hey, this is DA, and you're listening to The Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.